Hey there folks, this is James Sullivan, aka YouTube user Jaime Tood, and this is my Tood Sense. Welcome to the premiere episode of my new blog series talking about life from the perspective of a 30-year-old Asbergian male. As you can see, I've chosen a nice, beautiful location for my premiere episode. Mind you, when I first started making videos years ago, I really didn't plan on using my condition as some sort of vantage point, like you should watch my videos because, hey, I'm an Asbergian male. Or I didn't want to put myself in that category and define myself like that, like I was trying to get attention to myself. But the main reason I started this up is because the good folks at this website right here are trying to look for authors who can inspire and educate people on the condition. So if I can do that, maybe I've done my job. Hope I can entertain some folks at the same time. A question I sometimes hear from people is, when did you first find out that you had Asperger's syndrome? Well, I actually found out about it when I was 11. Fly. I'd undergone a series of pediatric psychological tests, and my parents decided to come to me with a very interesting way of breaking the news. The words specifically chosen in this case were, you think a little bit differently. And yet at the same time, I could understand what she was trying to say. And mainly after thinking about it a little bit more, all I really understood was being an Asbergian is just a slightly different way of thinking, or a slightly different way of processing information than other people. This would explain a lot of things to me, though. I had that moment where I was like, I didn't know. And yet somehow, I've always known. It would explain a few things like why it's so easy for me to slip out. It would explain why I had to take medication. It would explain why I just sort of felt different. Case in point, parents out there, if you're ever needing to tell your kids, just say, you think a little bit differently. It's a little confusing to put into words because, you know, everyone says, yeah, they're different, but you're a unique kind of different. There is an explanation for your kind of being different. That's mainly what your kids need to know. So that's more or less the Q&A section of this blog. If you do have questions regarding life being an Asbergian, feel free to drop them below or send them to any addresses that you might see around here. I'll make sure to try and pick them up and read them if I can. Thank you all for your time. The second portion of this vlog is when I give you my tood views. Basically, I'm going to take this time to look at a book, a movie, whatever tickles my fancy. And what do you know, it happens to be the month of Halloween. And I'm going to give you guys my Halloween music playlist. So in alphabetical order, here we go. Bump by Here Come the Mummies. Here's a song you probably never heard of. These guys like to dress up in mummy costumes and jump around on stage. But this song has a nice funkified rhythm to it. Oh, there's something about that flavor that you just don't get with today's music. I am the thing that goes by. I don't actually dance like that. Only when it's good for a joke. Second song, Bump in the Night by The All Stars. Not to be confused with the previous song, Bump, this song was off the soundtrack for the Scooby-Doo movie, which I hate with a passion, but I think this song is actually quite catchy. We also have the theme from Friday the 13th, Part 3. It's not a movie that I would recommend for the family. It does have a nice disco feeling thing going for it, though. Perfect for any dance party. Ghostbusters. Yeah, you saw that coming. It's Halloween Loween. Yeah, very funny spelling with this one. Another one you probably haven't heard of. This one plays at Disney theme parks, I think. And the title pretty much says it all. It's Halloween Loween. What? What's the Loween? Skeletons in My Closet by Team Fat. A little history behind this one. This song is off the soundtrack for The Seventh Guest, which was a mid-90s horror-themed game. Again, not for little kids to play. Although that never stopped me. It's got a very swingy sort of rhythm to it. You can gotta get into the groove there. A little slowness, never hurt anyone. The Crypt Jam. Audiences these days don't remember the Crypt Keeper so much, specifically family audiences. And this song was kind of a cheesy 90s thing. And yet still, I found it pretty groovy, even though it's a rap song completely concocted out of cryptic puns. The Monster Mash. Well, that's pretty obvious. I also have the Time War. Yes, this is the Rocky Horror Song. Again, I'm not going to recommend the movie to any kids out there. I personally think it's a little overrated. I just love this song. This is Halloween from what else? Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes, the only movie that qualifies as both a Christmas and a Halloween movie. And it opened up with this stunning number, so if you don't get much out of the movie, at least you'll get something out of the song. Thriller, the Michael Jackson classic. If it still sells well plus 25 years after its release, 
you know it's gotta be good. Too Bad You're Crazy by Jerry Whitman. You may not know this one, but it was the credit song off a horror film called April Fool's Day. And it's pretty silly, it's kind of a song that you wouldn't necessarily associate with anything scary, but it's about crazy people. Welcome to My Nightmare by Alice Cooper. There's a lot of Alice Cooper songs that I could put on this list. This is the only one that I don't think is too, too dark. And how can you not like that blend of rock and jazz and whatever he's got in here? I mean, it's awesome. And finally, another classic, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevin. You like werewolves? Darn it, I was gonna show you my mask. Just remember. <laughs> Just kidding. And that's about it. I hope you all like this first episode of Tooth Sense. I'll catch you next month, and keep sending in those questions. Ciao for now. If you like what you saw here, please, please, please try to help support it. I have a Patreon page. You can help me by going over there, throwing some money, whatever amount that you like to throw in. If you're not watching this on YouTube, I also have a YouTube channel. So go there and hit that subscribe button to be notified whenever new videos and new content come out. I'm also on Facebook. Go over there and like that page so you can be notified as well whenever a new episode or video of some sort come out, as well as exclusive behind the scenes content. You can also hit me up on Twitter over there to see what uh, kind of stuff that I like to share. Just be warned though, I don't like getting too many messages. So if you're constantly sending me stuff all the time, I can get really agitated. Remember, my privacy is golden. And if you like my t-shirt, I got a t-shirt store over there too. I got links, I got fresh designs, I got new stuff coming out over there. Provided, of course, that anything actually sells. That's about it. If you like what I do, hit that like button, Facebook me, tweet me, share me on your little social networking sites, do whatever you gotta do. Email me to all your little friends, and that's all I gotta say. Thank you, and peace!